But when you see the thing about one of the ulama, he said, always look. In fact, no, there's a hadith. He said, the Prophet ﷺ said about dunya, that you should look at people who are less than you in dunya. Because you'll always feel grateful. Now, there's always people less than you. I guarantee you. You'll always find people less than you. Right? So you say, Alhamdulillah. I mean, if you don't have a lot of money, in this country we're rich. In the biblical times, to put a, a jar of honey on your table was a sign of great wealth. A jar of honey on your table was a sign of great wealth. Really. And now people, one man said to uh, Ibn Omar, he said to him, you know, I'm a poor man. And he said, do you have a house? He said, yes. He said, then you're not poor. He said, do you have a wife? He said, yes. And he said, you're wealthy. And then he said, do you have a servant? He said, yes. Because in those days, like now, you know, in some countries, you don't have to be wealthy to have a servant. There's a lot of countries. Like if you live in, in, in Bangladesh uh, or Pakistan, even, you know, lower middle class people have really poor people as their servants. Because all they have to do is give them food and they'll work in their house. So he said, I even have a servant. He said, you are rich beyond, you know. So this is the thing. Here in America, the majority of people are would be considered in any previous time, they would be considered living in palaces. The idea of having running water. In this country in the 1930s, Still, about 70% of Americans did not have running water. The idea of having running water, the fact that you can take a hot shower by just turning a, a knob. People don't even think about that. You know, in Mauritania, Wallahi, where Marat al Haj lives, there's three women, Ayesha, Afia, and I can't remember the third one. Three women. Their job is to bring water every day. It takes them about two hours to go get the water. It takes them about an hour to fill it up. And it takes them two hours to come back. Five hours every day just to bring drinking water to their village. And that's their life. That's their life. They have to load the donkeys, right, with the khirba. When they drink water, wallahi, they say, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Their water is, it's brown. It's brown. Most of them have uh, urinary problems because of uh, the sediment in the water. People have forgotten this. You know, I'll just give you an example. Wallahi, I read this. Uh, the other day I was reading a letter uh, and don't ask me why I was reading it but I was reading a letter b by Robert E. Lee who was the head of the Confederate arm in the Civil War and after his house had been taken by the uh, federal troops his wife, he wrote a letter to his wife because she had to flee the house it's a, it's a mansion now, you, if, if anybody's been to Arlington Cemetery it's called the Custis Lee Mansion anyway, that was his house and uh it was captured. She had to flee. So he wrote this letter and he said, uh, I reflect on all of the great blessings that we shared in that house. And I feel fear in my heart that we did not show enough gratitude to God while that house was in our possession. And for that, from his wisdom, he has taken it away from us. That's, that is the way Muslims used to think. I mean, th that was a Christian man. But that's how he thought about it. Because that, that's, that is hikmah. That's the way to think. You know, why did this happen to me? This is unfair. That's not the response. The response is, what did I do to lose this blessing? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمَ الْحَتِّ يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ Allah does not change a people until they change themselves. Uh, 
Allah will not take a blessing away from a people until they change something in their hearts. In other words, they, they don't show gratitude for it. 